this is Ke Coach Karen. I'm here with Coach Nikki and Cadence. Today we're going to be instructing how to do a forward roll. So we're going to first show you how to instruct your gymnast how to do a forward roll. Then we'll show you how to spot the forward roll. And then finally, we'll show you the progression to that forward roll. So forward roll. Gymnasts will start with her arms in a straight up arm position next to her ears. She's going to bend her knees, reach down to the floor, tuck her head all the way into her chin, tight body, push off her feet, look at your belly, roll, arms up, and finish. Great. Now we're going to show you how to spot the forward roll. So Cadence is going to go back to the top of the cheese mat, arms up, Nikki will take her right hand, place it on the gymnast's left hip, and as the gymnast goes down, she's going to tuck her head in, Nikki's going to place her arm behind her neck to support her head, and watch her as she goes around into her floor roll, and finish. Progression to a forward roll is to be able to do the forward roll without using your hands for support to get up. So Cadence will start again with her arms up. She will bend her knees down into a squat, tuck her head in, look at her belly, push off her feet into a roll. Without hands, she stands up to a standing position, arms up, and finish. Hi, Coach Sharon here. Before we move into the cartwheel skill segment, I'd like to just talk a little bit about leg dominance when doing a cartwheel. When American children come into the gym, they're typically six years and over. And the American Pediatric Society tells us that leg and hand dominance really don't show up until the age of six. So you may have a child that comes in who's brand new, that's never done a cartwheel before, and has no idea which leg to use. So this is going to give you a couple of tips on how to determine the leg, leg dominance when doing cartwheel. One thing I do to instruct my student is I ask them to just step and lunge. Just jump into a lunge. Okay, just jump into a lunge. Good. So I see that her right leg is in front and it's bent. So that tells me, number one, that that's probably the leg that she's going to use as her dominant cartwheel. So the second thing I do is I tell her, stand back and face the wall behind you. Now, I want you to jump half turn and go into a lunge. Same thing. Jump half turn, go into a lunge. <gasps> Look, it's the same leg. Oh my gosh. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell her, Cadence, hey, take this little sticky, it's fluorescent, and put it on that leg. Put it on your thigh. Good job. So now I know that this is going to be the leg she's going to use her cartwheel with. Because it's three, three different tests. She grabbed with her right hand. She, jumped, she lunged with the right leg, and then she did a half turn jump lunge with the right leg. So I'm going to make sure that I'm going to teach her a right hook. And that's probably going to be. This video will demonstrate how to do a three quarter handstand and progress up to a full handstand, uh, both from an instruction standpoint as well as a spotting standpoint. So Cadence here is going to show us the body position that you begin with. Straight arms up next to her ears, nice lunge with her dominant leg. She's going to follow her arms down with her head, reach down, kick up into a needle kick. That's what we start with. She's going to do the same thing, this time into a three-quarter handstand, which arms down, kick up, and the second leg does not come up to me in the three-quarter handstand. She comes back down, and she finishes with her arms up next to her ears. The progression to this is a full handstand, so she will do again, arms down, kick all the way up, follow the other leg up, and back down into a lunge. Finish position. When spotting, Coach Nikki will take her arm closest to the gymnast's hip, and the gymnast kicks up, she grabs her other arm around to the other hip, supports at her hips, and the gymnast comes back down into her finish lunge position. Good job. Next, she's going to show us the progression to that, which would be on using the cheese mat. So she's going to do the same thing, but she's going to handstand up into the cheese mat. Same arm position, straight body, and back down into her lunge. Finish. Today, we're going to be doing a video on handstand forward roll. Prior to this, you should have 
viewed the videos for handstand as well as forward roll. So you want to make sure they have a strong handstand with straight arms and a strong forward roll with a top body position. We're using a panel mat for this beginning handstand forward roll and it's going to be with bent arms. So she's going to start about two feet beyond that mat. She's going to go into a strong lunge and she have her arms up close to where her ears in a starting position. Kick up into her handstand, push through her shoulders, tuck that head in, into a forward roll, finish with arms up, and strong finish. Thank you. Same thing, this time with a spot. Same body position, arms up, Nikki's holding her right hip, she's grabbing around, supporting her other hip, she's rolling and keeping her hands on her hips and supporting her back in the forward roll. And she finishes strong, again, arms up close to her ears and finish. Coach Karen here again with our friend Cadence, who will be showing us a backward roll. Backward roll is so important when you're teaching it, your hand position is essential. We've got the neck involved, so we want to be really careful when we instruct backward rolls. First position, we're showing it on an a wedge cheese mat so that she has the ability to go downward. So be, especially for beginners, this is important. She starts with her hands up next to her ears. She's going to bend back, bend her knees. Hand position. Hands are facing. Katie, show hand position. She puts her hands in a pizza pie position with fingertips towards her shoulders. So as she rolls back, her hands get placed in that position. Very important. More essential is that the spotting is done correctly. We have, again, the neck involved. We want to make sure we don't put any pressure on the neck when we spot. So we want to make sure that you're grabbing at both hips and pulling the gymnast up to take pressure off the neck. So she's going to start in her starting position, pizza by hands, bending her arms. Her hands come down to her ears. She bends back. Nikki's pulling up at both hips to take pressure off the neck, back to her starting position. Good job. Hi, Coach Nikki here. I am going to help you through the bridge skills. So first, we have Cadence here. We're going to make sure that she can land her back. She can push up to a full standing bridge with straight arms and her head off the floor. Good. Next, we're going to progress into, oh, come back up, into rocking back and forth. We're going to make sure the athlete can rock back and forth to begin to learn that weight transfer. Then, you're going to come down and stand up. From there, we can show different ways to get into the skill. So, Cadence is going to come over to my cheese mat. We're going to use this to kick up to the handstand on the floor and bring our feet down nice and slow into that bridge. Good. And then she can come down or she can kick over and finish. Very nice. Another variation is we can do, we can turn around, we can face the wall, put our arms up by our ears, our feet are shoulder width apart. We're going to do the back bend. We're going to push our hips forward a little bit, going down nice and slow. And finish. Come back up however you'd like. And finish. Very nice. So we're going to have Coach Karen over here come in and spot these. She's going to come down. Cadence is going to start in a nice strong lunge with her arms up. Closest hand reaches for that hip. Holding it tight, slowing her down, bringing her feet down to the mat. Very good. Again, she can kick over or she can come down and finish. Very nice. And then we're going to show you the spot for the back bend. Again, her arms start up, her hips go a little bit forward, her hands go back, looking at her hands, and then we come back up and arms up. Very nice. And finish. Hi, guys. Coach Karen back with Cadence. This video will cover front limber as well as progression to that, which would be your front walk. We're going to instruct and then we'll show how to spot both on the cheese mat, which we're using as our prop, and then progressing to the floor. Cadence will start in her starting position, which is her front lunge, arms up tight, close to her ears. She kicks up into a full handstand and limbers over into a front limber, pushing off of her feet and arms to ending position. Good job. Second, the progression to that would be a front walkover. We want to have a tight, strong body. We want straight arms and straight legs. 
So the difference is she's now going to split her legs all the way through. So again, arms in the starting position, lunge, kick up, keeping her legs split, and pushing up into her ending position with arms up and lunge. Good job. If we were to spot a front limber or a front walkover, Coach Nikki will show how to do that on the floor. Arms closest to the gymnast's right hip in this case. She's going to kick up into her handstand. She's grabbing her around the back, lower back, and shoulder to support her on the up position from the front limber. End position, and back to the progression to that, which is now your front walkover. Again, kicking up, grabbing her arms around the gymnast's body and upper shoulders, helping her on the lift. Good job. We're going to show you how to teach the back bend kickover as well as the back walkover. All right, if you need any help, you can always refer back to the bridge skills that we showed you previously. But first, before we start that, we're going to show you some progressions to do first. She's going to lay down on the mat and push up all the way up to a nice straight bridge with her arms straight, and then we're going to kick over. We're going to push with straight legs, splitting and finishing in a lunge. Once she could do that, then we can take it to the floor. Before that, we also need to make sure that she can do her back bend all by herself. Hands up, we're looking at her hand, and we come down. Awesome. Once they've mastered those two skills, so you can come on up, then we can take it to the floor. Cadence is going to come over here. She's going to show us how to do it on the floor. She starts with her feet, nice shoulder width apart, her arms by her ears, and she's going to go back nice and slow, pushing those hips forward. Good. As she pushes her hands forward, she kicks her legs and split, finishing in a lunge. Very nice. Once they are able to do that, then we can progress into the back walkover. The back walkover is a little different. We start with that one foot in front, our toe pointed, our leg lifts as our hands go back, and we finish in the lunge. Excellent. So now we're going to have Coach Karen come in here, and she's going to tell you how to spot it. So we're going to spot on the pool, yep. Yeah? And she's going to go down on her knees. Her arms are going to go back behind Cadence. We're going to follow her at the neck, and her hands go back into that bridge. Good. And then we position, get ready for the kickover. Her leg comes up. We push in that chest, finishing in a push. Very nice. And then for the back walkover. So we start again with that foot forward. We, her right hand is on her back, left hand ready, and we spot back, supporting the neck, switch it over, and finish. Very nice. Again, Coach Nikki here, and we are going to progress from the backward roll into the back extension roll. So Katie here is going to show us a nice backward roll on the mat, but this time we're going to push and land in a push-up position. So she starts with those pizza hands, elbows in close to her body, good, and sitting back, pushing, and nice and strong, please, good job. So once she could do that, we're going to ask her to bring her toes up just a little bit more to the sky, beginning to hit that handstand, and then falling into the same position. So try it again. Up, and hands in. Very good. That was almost a full extension, back extension roll. So this time, again, we are going to keep those arms in close, and we are going to push to a full handstand, and then step down. So as she sits back, she pushes, she tries to reach that full handstand, and finish. Good. So here's how we spot. Karen's going to come on over. She's going to come down on her knee, get nice and close. As she sits back, she's going to reach with her hands for those hips. Stopping her in that handstand. Go ahead. Feet to hands. Push. Good. Okay, now she progressed to straight arms. So we're going to do that again this time. And we're going to make sure we have those feet to hands. And we're going to push to straight arms. Up into that handstand. Good. Up. There. Finish. Very good. And so as she progresses, then she can do it on the floor. Remember that she's not back. And over here. Good. And forward. Good. Arms up. Now she's going to show you the competitive way. Her fingers turn in. She's going to have nice straight arms the entire time. So she's going to sit and push back, opening, flipping her hands. Nice. And finish. Very good. So that would be the final product of the back extension roll. We're actually going to show you how to do a cartwheel. Prior to this, make sure you refer back to the previous videos that cover needle kick as well as three-quarter handstand. You want to make sure they have strong arms and straight legs. 
before they progress to a cartwheel. So she's going to be starting in a right cartwheel position uh, because Cadence does a right cartwheel. So she's going to be using her right leg in a lunge, starting arms close to the ears. She's going to kick her back leg up, split those legs, arms together at the end, and lunge position to finish. Good job. In spotting a cartwheel, we're going to have Coach Nikki come on. She's going to go to the side of the gymnast's dominant leg. In this case, it's the right leg. She places her right palm on her right hip, and she cartwheels over, grabbing her other hip, supporting her throughout the exercise. And we're going to be going over round off with cadence. We're going to show the progression to actually executing a round off as well as the spot instruction. So what we want to do is make sure that your gymnast knows a good cartwheel, has strong straight legs and straight arms, good body position, and what we're going to start with is teaching the gymnast how to do a cartwheel with her legs together at the end. Okay, show us a cartwheel with putting your legs together at the end. Two legs come together, and again. So she's going to do a cartwheel, as we know it, and bring her legs together at the end. So it gets her into the idea of two legs coming together. What we want to do is then progress to a panel mat, where she's going to come over here. She's going to put her hands down, and she's going to do jump up, or I'm sorry, step up to a handstand, and snap down. So we're going to learn the snap down portion of the round off with the panel mat. Go ahead. Handstand, legs together, straight body, step down. And do one more. Arms always starting in the up position. Following down, neutral head, and snap down, arms up, and position. Finally, what we want to do is put that all together by doing a half cartwheel, legs together, snap down. So show us a round off. So now she has all three progressions. She has the cartwheel with legs together, she's learned the snap down, finally finishing off with everything together being the round off. Always arms position is up at the end and strong finish. Good job. Now what I'd like to do is add a spotting instruction for round off. This is very similar to a cartwheel where Miss Nikki is going to put her hand position up and her reaches her arm around and grabs her at both hips for the snap down. Good job. Arms up at the end. Always finish strong. Thank you. Here we are. We are at the back handspring portion of the videos. This is absolutely essential that you listen to this part of the video. Back handsprings must always be spotted. No matter whether they, the gymnast can do a back bend, a handspring, whatever. They always must be spotted. We're going to show this video in three progressions with two props, one being a Pac-Man mat, second being doing it on a cheese mat, and third and final, on the floor. All three progressions will show the back handspring with a spot. This does not follow the normal progression of other skills, where we let them do it on their own. We are always spotted on the back handspring. All right, so given that information, Nikki will be spotting throughout this video, and we're going to start with the Pac-Man mat. Miss Cadence is going to start sitting in the Pac-Man, arms up towards the ears. She's going to have a nice, strong sit with knees bent. Again, head position neutral between her arms. Now she's going to use her feet, push off the floor. She's arching up and back, and Nikki's grabbing from her lower back, and holding her at the torso to support her until the end. Okay, here's the cheese mat progression. So now we have finished the Pac-Man mat, back handspring. Now we're gonna spot on a cheese mat from top to bottom. Nikki has her arm around the far hip, away from herself. Her other hand is on the upper back of the thighs. She's gonna do the same arm position, head neutral, bend your knees back, sit, and jump back. She's supporting her lower back and her thighs at the same time till she reaches the end position. Arms up and neutral and finish. 
now we've progressed to the floor end of the back handspring. So we finished with the Pac-Man mat as well as showing you spotting back handspring on the cheese mat. Now we're going to show how to spot a standing back handspring on the floor and we're going to progress that to a round up back handspring. So she's got, Nikki's got her arm around a gymnast's waist on the other side and her hand below on her thighs. She's going to swing, uh, Cadence is going to swing her arms down, bend her knees, sit back, follow arms around. Nikki's got her back and she snaps down to finish strong with her arms up. Good job. And now I'll show you the round up back handspring. What's important here, she starts in a front lunge. Nikki is distancing herself from the gymnast so that when the gymnast lands her feet in the round up, she's right at Nikki's center between her two legs. All right, so Cadence to your round up, snap back, and finish strong, arms up. Good job. Again, grabbing her back, supporting her thighs and lower back during that scale. Good job. Coach Karen's back again. I'm here with the safety portion of the videos. This is extremely important that you watch this video from start to end because it's going to encompass safety guidelines, not only for the gym and in general, but also for all of our apparatus and what to look for in keeping our gymnasts safe. Our job as coaches is to keep our children as safe as possible while helping them to learn at the same time and have fun. So with that in mind, we have safety cards at the gym where each gym has a card where they will, the coach will read each safety guideline for each piece of apparatus to the child. And once that child has heard all of the safety guidelines, a director will sign that card. So that's just for you to know for your own purposes. The first portion is general guidelines, general safety guidelines that we want to enforce to our students. Number one is no one as a coach is ever allowed to leave their group unattended. That is key. So if something happens or a student goes, gets upset, you want to stay with your group at all times. If you have to leave for any reason, you'll want to go and get another coach to cover your, your class. All right. Don't allow the children to run around. Keep them in their groups, in line. Very important. Make sure that if the students have to leave for bathroom breaks or to get a drink, they ask permission first. Very important. We do not want students running out of the gym because they need to get a drink or go to the bathroom. They need to ask you as a coach to leave the gym. Do not allow a new skill for a child unless you feel comfortable that that child can do that skill. So that's important. We don't want to push them and make them uncomfortable or afraid to move forward in their ability. We want to make them confident and let them know it's okay to be afraid, but you're going to try it. Finally, don't let students do gymnastics at home. They don't have proper spotters around. We don't want them getting hurt. We really want to use the gym for them to do gymnastics.